What's up and welcome to my guide to excellent USB-C gaming. You know, USB-C gaming in the past was kind of trash, like laptops couldn't run at good frame rates, it didn't quite charge your laptop fully at the same time that you'd be playing. But with the era of the new iGPUs, especially with the new AMD 890M iGPUs or the Intel Arc 140T GPUs featured in the Intel Core Ultra 9, both of those integrated GPUs can play AAA games on low settings on fairly low power consumption. In addition, Nvidia GPUs can deliver 120 20 frames per second gameplay and get about an hour and a half of battery life at the same time. But when you pair it with a USB-C power charger, like the Ugreen 200 watt power charger, or this Vention 140 watt power charger, or you know, this EcoFlow 100 watt power charger at a time. Well, technically this can do 200 watts at a time, but split 100 watts to each device. And this one can do 100 watts and 70 watts respectively at the same time. The era of USB-C gaming is here actually, and it works really, really well if you have the right laptop. Some laptops are not gonna have motherboards capable of stepping down that wattage to comfortably play games running USB-C. You also need at least 100 watts power delivery at a time, in my opinion, probably, maybe unless you're doing iGPU gaming, then 65 watts is probably okay. Thankfully, both of these power banks can do that, and then the Ugreen power adapter can do 100 watt power delivery as well. Now, you can get a cheaper one that can do 140 out of one port. There's a lot of different options out there for USB-C power delivery, but I'm gonna talk about the ones that I went and found because my existing USB chargers were not powerful enough to do power delivery 3.1. So I went and found the very very best ones that I could find for specs for the money. This Vention 99 watt hour one only costs $80, so less than $1 per watt. And this EcoFlow, a very reputable brand with two USB-C power cables, only costs $95. So you can really get multi-hour gaming on the go out of either your laptop or something like the Xbox Ally X, which I have been using to game extensively with XR glasses. These Veecher Luma Pros have been fantastic for gaming on the go and gaming on international flights, car rides, basically anywhere and everywhere you want to go. But probably my favorite place to use it is just laying down in bed because you can look up and be completely relaxed holding the Xbox Ally X around your waist and just be immersed in the gameplay with no issues. Like it's just good gameplay performance with good graphics, with a gorgeous screen, great ergonomics, and you can game for many, many hours if you pick up one or two of these guys. So in today's video, I've got performance numbers for you. How long can I get out of my Zephyrus G16 with an RTX 5070 Ti running the iGPU versus the RTX 5070 Ti? And what does that performance difference look like? What kind of battery life can you get pairing two of these guys? with the Zephyrus G16, as well as the Xbox Ally X. I did some actual battery rundown tests. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now I ended up picking up the Ugreen Nexo 200 watt USB-C GAN charger and the Vention and EcoFlow battery banks. And these ones I'll have linked in the description down below. They will still help support my channel if you do use those links. So thank you very much for using those links. I want to note that USB-C gaming, you really kind of need a current gen, probably 2023 or newer laptop that has an iGPU or a very power efficient NVIDIA GPU, probably RTX 4000 or 5000 GPU with a motherboard that can step down the wattage on that GPU to a reasonable level and still maintain consistent frame rates. Like my RTX 4090 Razer Blade 18 did not do well gaming on USB-C no matter what I did. But the Zephyrus G16 with a 5070 Ti, it's gaming like a dream on USB-C power. And I mean, I probably don't even need to bring my 240 watt power adapter I can just bring my Ugreen 200 watt adapter now if I just want to do some casual gaming. And of course, if I'm just doing casual gaming, I could just do it on the Xbox Ally X with a pair of XR goggles. And it's kind of a better experience, at least for casual games. For competitive multiplayer games, I think I'd still want a high refresh rate laptop display with a light speed level mouse. That's probably the key thing there for aiming. I've been going crazy and falling in love with the Xbox Ally X. I even got a portable Bluetooth keyboard, mouse, and headset that I can all connect at once. So three devices, one Bluetooth connection, and then use the XR glasses to turn that little 
tiny screen from the Xbox Ally X into a giant projector screen in front of my face. Keyboard and mouse gaming on the Xbox Ally X is still doable. And more importantly, I think productivity is still doable. The thing is light speed mouse input, I think is very important for aiming. So I still think you're probably gonna want to have some kind of light speed input. That's the key, I think. Some kind of USB-A to USB-C input or using a USB dock to be able to get a light speed mouse input into the Xbox Ally X or whatever laptop you're using. So before we get into the battery rundowns, let's just talk about actually gaming on a handheld or these iGPUs, because it's basically the Radeon 890M in that Xbox Ally X. That's gonna be very similar to what you're gonna get in the Zephyrus G14 on that Ryzen 9 HX370. The Xbox Ally X can play God of War Ragnarok at about 83 FPS for two hours and 40 minutes at the 17 watt performance mode. That's crazy. So you add in a 99 watt hour battery, you're gonna get some crazy long run times. Like with the Vention, I got three hours, 12 minutes. And with the EcoFlow, I got two hours and I think 53 minutes. And so depending on how many watt hours your battery bank has, you can really extend the longevity of your battery life. That was without any performance optimization, pretty much just restarted going into the game and playing the game at 17 watt. If you turn off Wi-Fi, you turn off Bluetooth, you turn off the RGB, you turn down the screen brightness, or you use XR glasses, which are very low power as well, then you can get some really long battery life, potentially into the four hour range for a AAA title, especially if you limit the frame rate. If you're going down to like 40 FPS instead of 60 or 100 or just letting it run at unlimited, you know, limiting that frame rate is gonna really improve your battery life on a very power efficient system like the Xbox Ally X. Now, limiting your frame rate on the Zephyrus G16 kind of gave me some improvement, but I could not get the Zephyrus G16 to really ramp down the wattage being utilized. With the iGPU gaming on the G16 on the Intel Arc 140T, I was able to get Hades 2 to run flawlessly at 120 frames per second. In performance mode, it sucked down about 45 watts per minute. So that's going to last you about two hours, a little over that if you have a 99 watt hour battery in your laptop, so maybe two hours, 15 minutes. And in silent mode, it was doing about 40 watts. So that extends us out to about two and a half hours of realistic usage in a lighter weight title like Hades 2, but that's 120 frames per second. So if I put on airplane mode, turning off Bluetooth, turning off Wi-Fi, and reducing the brightness down to 50%, I was able to get the power drain down to 33 watt hours, which means that if you have a 99 watt hour battery, you're looking at three hours of continuous gameplay on a gaming laptop at smooth frame rates. And then you throw in, say, two of these Vention 99 watt hour battery banks, and you're talking nine hours of gaming laptop on the go power it's awesome. When I was unboxing the Ugreen power adapter, I was shocked at how well built, like it just feels like a tank in your hands. All the USB-C ports are super tight. You gotta really push those USB-C power plugs in and out and they have nice spacing so that my big fat 240 watt cable plugs can go into them, no problem. Which I did go find three USB-C power pack plugs that would allow me to have power readouts. And so this lets me actually see the amount of wattage going through the cable and into the device on the fly, which is just super useful to know, you know, especially something like the Ugreen power plug where the wattage will be variable depending on how many things you have plugged in. So you could actively be like, oh, maybe I should unplug a couple of things if I wanna get a full 100 watt power charge going into this device right now. So I really recommend getting these USB power level reading cables, as well as getting 240 watt power cables because later on down the line, you may want to get a 240 watt USB-C power adapter, which I did order the Ugreen 500 watt to come into my Thailand address, but I don't have that here in America right now. So I can't really test that, but that should be able to power five laptops at 100 watts per laptop or one laptop at 240 watts, assuming that is USB-C capable input of 240 watts. Right now, the only laptop I'm aware of that can do that is the MacBook Pro. Like M4 Max, I think, can do the 240 watt input. So there's only like one right now. But in the future, I would not be surprised to see many different laptops pulling out the, all the stops and go into the 240 watt power plug, especially for the thinner, lighter, more portable, 
focused systems. In my actual power charging testing with the Ugreen power adapter, we were able to get 100 watts going into each of these power banks, no problem. So these charge at 100 watts, and that means it's gonna take one hour to fully charge one of these guys up. And then if you plug in two of these at the same time, you get 100 watts on one and 85 on the other. So the Ugreen starts splitting up the power as soon as you plug in more than one thing. So you can get 200 watts output, it's 185, and you can do one other device at 15. But if you do multiple USB-C high power things, it'll start dividing it up like into 65, 65, and 65. So you can get three power delivery devices going on at the same time. So if you're doing three laptops, you could charge, in theory, three laptops all at once using this Ugreen power adapter. Now, if you have a 140 watt laptop, the great thing is the Vention, this lanyard cable right here is super strong. It's very easy to just pop this up and out and use this to plug into whatever laptop you have. This can actually go to 140 watts. So if you have one of those Legion laptops, then this Vention power cable will be able to fully power that Legion laptop really, really well. As good or better than any other USB-C power cable out there. Between these two power bricks, which one would I recommend? Well, the EcoFlow is convenient because you get four total USBs out. Three USB-C and one A and two built-in cables. And that's just really, really heckin' convenient. I just really wish it was a 99 watt hour battery bank. And if you want to go to the 99 watt hour battery bank, it's like twice as much money. So it's kind of hard for me to recommend that. If you really want EcoFlow, just go with this one, save some money. It's just gonna be 90 watt hours. If you don't mind, going for a lesser known brand like the Vention. I've been very impressed with this one. This one has total estimated charge time. It's got a little LED readout here that gives you a little smiley face when you got 100% charge. The only downside here is that you get three USB outs. You get two USB-C and one USB-A. It does come with a 240 watt USB-C power cable that you can plug in here. So you get one built-in high power cable out of the box. And then the lanyard cable is 140 watt. This one does allow you to charge this or output the signal as well. So very impressive. I think the fact that the Vention did the best in my battery testing verifies that this is a legit product and the build quality feels legit. It's the same size as the EcoFlow, like exactly the same size pretty much. If I had to choose, I would have bought two with the Vention because you get the full 99 watt hour. It's just a downside that you don't get as many power cable outputs. So I guess if you need more power cable outfits, go with the EcoFlow, but the Vention's also cheaper. So it's like 15 bucks cheaper. I mean, at least it's on sale right now. I don't know if it's still will be in the future or not. When comparing performance of the iGPU, the Intel Arc 140T versus the RTX 5070 Ti, I was able to push over 120 frames per second with frame gen on in Expedition 33. And this was draining 66 watts of power, which is basically double that of the optimized power level of the Intel Arc 140T. So, I mean, if you're going for high FPS gaming and you don't need to have as long a battery life, then using the NVIDIA GPU can make a lot of sense because you get better gaming experience. It's just gonna drain that battery pretty dang fast. So if you pick up two of these, you can get four and a half hours of quality gameplay out of your system. And I think that's pretty dang good. But my recommendation is if you're going to do USB-C gaming is you need to think about your experience from like an optimization standpoint. You need to try to optimize at the laptop level as well as at the game level. So you wanna pick a game that's lighter weight that you really wanna play like Hades 2, for example, is perfect because you can really get a ton of FPS for very low weight wattage and get great gameplay performance on the go with pretty much any of the handhelds or the integrated GPUs on gaming laptops. The other option is you can pick an older title or just a really optimized modern title. So maybe Baldur's Gate 3, you could run that at 30 or 40 FPS capped and get some really great visual performance without draining your computer too much. Ideally, I do think you should be using the iGPU when you're gonna be gaming on the USB-C power, if you wanna have great battery life. Overall, I'm in love with this whole USB-C gaming from a handheld gaming perspective, especially when paired with XR glasses or even USB-C gaming on something like the Zephyrus G16. There's just a lot of potential and things are just gonna keep getting better and better. And I think over time, as long as games remain optimized, you may only need an iGPU to get a great gaming performance out of a gaming laptop. At least if you're not obsessed with playing all your games on ultra settings with like 200 plus FPS. Like if you're okay with playing a smooth 60 frames per second in most of your games, then an iGPU is already hitting a lot of that FPS benchmark in a lot of titles. Like, so I mean, that's still playable. Like as long as your 1% lows are not dropping significantly low, then that's still a playable, awesome gaming experience. And that's 
Handhelds are kind of blowing my mind. Integrated gaming performance, empowering gaming laptops to go with USB-C power delivery to get great gaming performance on the go. And then of course, even running an NVIDIA GPU is possible now on battery or on USB-C power delivery to get several hours of gameplay out of that NVIDIA GPU. It's all coming together, this portable gaming dream that you know we've had for years. And I just, I can't wait to see what next gen iGPU performance looks like. We're already getting some nice uplifts and RDNA 4 iGPU is coming out from AMD probably next year or the year after. I don't know when they're going to hit the market, but when those hit, man, it's going to be another level of performance. And then Intel has been cooking. They've been doing some really great work on their iGPUs. So in the future, like we're talking some great gaming performance potentially on USB-C and on ultra low power for great battery gaming levels that we've never seen before in modern gaming history. Anyway. I hope you guys excuse the background. I'm doing the best I can while I'm traveling here. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out. Hey.